Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and welcome to another series um, at I Am Love Church. I need to try that again, huh? Nah. All right. Welcome to church. <laughs> Anyways, so something came to me just recently, and I'm not just going to do church on Sundays. I'm going to do it every time I feel like God has something to say, because I honestly believe that not the work shouldn't just be done on Sunday. The work needs to be done every day. Everyone needs prayer every day. Everyone needs something from God every day. And if the devil is working all the time, then God's people need to be working all the time. So this is the message that I got. All right. So today I woke up. All right. And, uh, you know, read my Bible, prayed, took a shower. And then my wife decided to take off. And I say this just because it... Um, it's good to be alone sometimes because that's where God meets us when we're alone and it's kind of uncomfortable for others to be around when we're in an emotional state and God brought me to an emotional state. So my wife left and then uh, I just was reading scripture. Something told me to turn on worship music. I started just listening to Christian music and then um, just worshiping. Da da da, getting excited. Man, it was just like, cause I've been reading the Psalms all about singing, all about rejoicing in the Lord. And then it hit me and God said, it's time to heal. Time to heal from what, right? Well, I want to just kind of bring it into this idea. Now, bear with me. You ever seen The Matrix? Have you ever seen Inception? Have you ever seen a movie where the character or characters, they go to sleep and then they go into this... Um, different reality, right? Um, such as the matrix, or they go into like the layers of dreams. Well, doesn't life sometimes feel like a dream? And then sometimes life feels like this is way too real, right? What is real? What isn't real? We're not, I'm not going to get too far into that, but I know this much. Yesterday I was here and I'm no longer in yesterday and I can't see into tomorrow, but I'm here now. And then this moment will pass away. And then I'll be in another moment talking about this moment or another moment. And it's just weird. I mean, what is time, right? Well, I know that the, in the Bible that God is not bound by time. Now, if you are like me, who's a sinner and you've sinned a lot, then that means that we have a lot of, we've had a lot of bad experiences. And because of those bad experiences, we, those are memories that our conscious stores away. Now, we don't remember them all the time, but subconscious, our subconscious does. So if you have such as a problem such as uh, anxiety or, you know, fear of some sort. I want to remind you that God wants to take away all your fears. He wants to take away all your burdens. He wants to take away all your sins or all those bad memories of people sinning against you or you sinning. And this morning, he did that with one of my experiences. And I don't want to say this to condemn the person. I don't want you to condemn them. I want you to pray for them. And just pray for everyone. Pray for yourself. Pray for those experiences if you've had them. I know we all have. Those terrible, scarring experiences that damage us and they define who we are even today. Some of us are living in the past, in the present. Some of us have sinned or have had others sinned against us in the past. And those areas in our life are not healed. Even though we're in the reality of today, we're still experiencing the pain of the past. But I tell you right now that God wants to heal those things. He wants to heal those experiences. He sent Jesus to take 
those experiences away from you because you were never meant or created like anyone else to experience those things. But the fact that you experienced them, God wants to heal you and he wants to do it right now. So if you could pray with me, I pray right now that those experiences will be healed, that you will hear the Father's voice and you will know that you're loved. When I woke up this morning, I did not expect this to happen. After I was finished worshiping, God said, sit down, it's time to heal. And I felt the power of the Holy Spirit come upon me. And he brought me mentally through those experience, back to those experiences, those painful experiences, such as I didn't grow up with a bed. Every morning when I was about five till basically graduated high school, I slept on the ground. I slept in the hallway of my, uh, uh, the apartment that we lived in with, it was four of us and my, it was five of us and um, five brothers and sisters, five brothers and sisters, including myself and my, my mom, our dad wasn't there. And that was my life. I didn't have a bed. And uh, another experience I had with Um, one of my relatives was being slapped across the face and just slapped and slapped and slapped. And and then I tackled this person down the stairs and it was just a bad experience. And there's not, that was just only two that he brought up today that he healed me of. But if you've ever had any sin that you've committed or sins that you've committed against or others committed against you, you need healing for that. Otherwise you're living in that torment today even if you're unaware of it. You need forgiveness, and only forgiveness can come through the grace and love of God and Jesus' blood. So I had those bad experiences. And I just felt this warm sensation come over me, come through my mind. It brought me right back to it. And this time, I wasn't in the first person state getting hit, right? I was on the side. I was standing on the side and I remember that I was on the wall against the wall and then the relative was right in front of me and then there was another person on the other side who was there at the time just slapping me, slapping me, or the relative was slapping me and then the other person was encouraging him. And I was in this first person state getting hit by this person and, and then Jesus comes into this scenario and he grabs me and it's like time stopped. And he grabs me and he pulls me out of this situation. He pulls me on the side. Meanwhile, the person standing in front of me is hitting me or hitting the physical me. Jesus takes me out of the situation. It's like time stopped. And before the, even the first hit went, there was other person uh, accusing me saying, yeah, yeah, do it, do it. Teach him a lesson, such and such. Jesus stands in the spot that I was getting hit. And he took my place. And I was free. And I cried, like a lot. And the person was hitting me was not no longer hitting me. They were hitting Jesus. And they were accusing and antagonizing Jesus. The same thing happened when I was growing up. I didn't have a place, a bed. I was sleeping in the hallway. And as I got down on the ground to lay on the ground, I remember my spirit came out of my body. And it was, it was something like as I was laying down, Jesus was laying down with me. And he laid down with me. And I got up. And I... I don't know where that other conscious went, but it was no longer I who was sleeping on the ground, but it was Jesus. And the same thing applies for any bad experience that you go through in this life. Jesus takes your place. You, those bad, those people hurt you. No one's denying that. Or you hurt others. But Jesus says, is anyone who repents, anyone who says, I'm sorry, I will remove them from those bad experiences and I would take them out and I will heal them and I would take their place. 
Some of you guys, you guys have a lot of burdens in your life. Whatever it is, you have pornography, you have an, an addiction, you have an anger problem because someone hurts you. Maybe you were even, I don't know, molested, and then now you go and molest people. I don't know what you do. You know your sins better than anyone else. And you're ashamed and you're still walking in that guilt. You know you hear the gospel that Jesus forgives you, but you really want to be forgiven. You really want a new life. You don't want to be accused no more by your enemies or you don't want to accuse others. You want to be restored to who you are really supposed to be. You want, it, you want peace. You want to rest from those burdens. Because without the blood of Jesus, you're walking around with those burdens. You're carrying them. and They're getting heavier and heavier. And Jesus wants to heal you of those experiences. He wants to take you away from those experiences. He wants to get to the root of the problem. Because we can trim branches all day and cut leaves. But until we pull out the whole root from its core and get the original sin forgiven, you're going to constantly produce bad fruit in your life, bad leaves, bad branches. And that's what he describes as when he heals a blind man and he says, what do you see? And he says, I see people as trees walking around. And he talks about God being um, a vine owner who prunes the trees and stuff. And the bad trees will be pruned and thrown into the fire. And the good trees, he comes and plucks the fruit off of them. He wants you to have a fruitful life. But in order for you to have a fruitful life, you have to get the bad cancer that is corroding your tree, your body, your conscience, your mind. You need to get those places healed and you need to be restored. So I pray over your past, those experiences. I know that you're thinking about them right now. I know I pray for them. I pray that Jesus would go back in time because he's not bound by time. He would go to those experiences and you would just have a personal one-on-one -on -one experience of Jesus taking you from those terrible experiences and he would take your place and you will be restored to your former glory. The Bible says that he took upon the sins of the world. Everyone, yours, mine, every bad thing we've ever done or others have done to us, he's taken upon himself. And that's what it represents. The cross represents Jesus taking the burdens. God put all the burdens and sins on this lamb of God who was innocent and blameless because he so loved you. If that's not love, I don't know what love is. If someone in those situations, I remember other situations where someone is about to hit me, about to punch me, about to accuse me. And Jesus stops time and he takes your spot and he says, go, 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 I got this. And in, in what was meant for your punishment, that punching, that boom, boom, all that, whatever you did, whatever others have done to you, Jesus took their spot your spot, their spot. He died for them just as much as he died for you. And he took it upon himself so you can be free, so you can be innocent, so you can be blameless. That's amazing. For the punishment that was due to you was taken upon himself. You were meant for eternal punishment. You were meant to keep those burdens you are meant to keep those burdens, that weight, that pressure of life that's going to weigh you down until the day you die. You deserve it. We all do. But God so loved you that he's willing to heal you of those terrible experiences. And that's what it means for me when I, I get accused every day and I hurt people every day and others hurt me. But what keeps me loving is the forgiveness. And that's why we worship. That's why we cry out. And it looks crazy because we we worship the one who heals us. Some of you guys have sinned years ago and you're still being accused today. 
Some of you guys are holding grudges against people from years ago or even yesterday. You're not even living in yesterday or five minutes ago. And you're accusing them today. And he's saying, I'm trying to set you free so you can just move on with your life. Because isn't greater life than those burdens? Leave those burdens behind. That's what Jesus did. He died on the cross. He was buried for three days and he left the grave and he didn't look back. Not to seek revenge, not to say, oh, I've become successful. See all the, you know, I got back at my enemies. Some of you guys try to get back at your enemies through success and that's still revenge. Jesus says, I want to set you free to the point where you can even love them. You can even love your enemies. You can go look at that and go, wow. And that's what it means to worship the Jesus that I serve. It's not about what I know. I can't cover up my sin by my knowledge. I can't cover up my sin by the clothes that I wear, by how much money I have, by even whatever. It, some of us are even living in a victim stage and we're comfortable like being a victim. Oh, everything's not working out. Everything's so terrible. Everyone's against me. And Jesus is like, some people, you glorify yourself in that. You compete with how miserable your life is or you compete with how good your life is. And it's a goodness that comes from the world. It's not the goodness of God. Because if there's anything to boast, boast in Jesus. Boast in the Lord. Because he's the one that took off that pride. There's pride in victimizing, being a victim. There's pride in thinking that you're greater than others by your own understanding. But find yourself in the middle and at the foot of the cross where Jesus is, where God is. Jesus did it all. It's finished. It says, Jesus, the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. Before God even created the world, Jesus already died on the cross. And he provides the same salvation as he does today and forever. New hope, new life. But in order to get the new, you have to let go of the old. You have to let go of your old thinking. You have to let go of the, your old beliefs, your old ways, everything. You have to die to those things to inherit something greater. Unless the seed dies, it can bear no fruit. Unless those bad experiences die and Jesus has them, then you can't move on. And I want to go a little further and say this. God said this to me. He said, you are the limitations for how far you go. Your life is an example of how far you think you should go. Your boundaries are the boundaries that you've set. This is as good as life gets. No, he says, that is how far your faith has stretched. It's not good enough to just know something because anyone can know something. But it takes a whole different person to actually walk it out. So that pretty much concludes this. I hope you got something out of it. I know I did. It was a wonderful experience to get healed from that. I was crying like a little baby. I was like, oh my gosh. I didn't realize I was still carrying that. I was like, oh, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. You freed me from that burden. You know, I was like, oh, praise the God. And I love him that much more. And I love you guys that much more. And I understand your pain. And he and I want to help you get free of that pain. We don't need mental institutions. We don't have PTSD. We just had bad, unforgiving experiences that we need healed. Thank you so much. Keep following Christ. Read your Bible every day. God bless.